Hi everybody, this is Jenny K. Parks. Welcome to Ask Jenny K. I'm so glad you're here. Today the topic is quarter inch seam allowance, finding and keeping. You want to have a consistent quarter inch seam allowance. As I say often, that there are no rules with quilting, there are just realities. And one of the realities absolutely is that everything is based off of an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. If you don't have that, it's just going to get worse and worse for you. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Let me just tell you a little bit about what's going on in here. You see this beautiful quilt behind me? Yes. That pattern is yours free if you sign up for my newsletter. And I promise I won't pester you. And if you want to unsubscribe, I require a five paragraph theme. No, I'm just kidding. You can just unsubscribe. That's fine. <laughs> I won't hassle you. But I do want to share a lot of good stuff and the things that I have going on. For example, as luck would have it this week, this week, and I didn't plan this, I swear, this week on QNN TV, the episodes, some of the episodes that I shot for um, Quilt Makers Lessons in Creativity, series four, or, I'm sorry, series number three, it's number 302, is talking, I talk about quarter inch seam allowances. So you can go there and you can check out more of the details and if there's stuff that I show you that you can't quite see up close, you can see it better there. But I'm also talking about, see these lovely, these lovely um, log cabin squares that we made and the whole episode is of working with, uh, the whole series this time, number three is working with log cabins and we used uh, 1930s fabrics and show you lots of different arrangements and stuff like that. So you can go check that out, qnntv.com, and you don't have to pay. All you have to do is just register. They want to trade your email, and you can, you can get in there and have it. It's, it's a lot of fun. There's lots of fun, free stuff. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. You want to know more about me, you can check out my website, jennykquilts.com, and let's get started. Quarter inch seam allowance. What is the big deal? How can we do a better job of it? No, oh, hang on, I'm moving my notes. How can we do a better job of it? How can I get it? And how can I keep it? So, first question, how do you get it? And this, I'm going to share with you the same method that I do that I share with, um, with my students when I teach beginner classes. Because I, I start with the very beginning, absolute beginner. What we do is we take two strips, right? I have them cut strips because you got to cut strips. That's important to practice. Cut two strips and sew them together. These just happen to be two inches wide, but you don't have to go with two inches wide. You can go with, with whatever you happen to have on hand. But you want two strips that are the same size and sew them together using whatever method you've started with. Because when you're starting to figure this out, you kind of have to just go with what you have. So this is sort of a first try, and you can feel free to try again and again if you need to, but you got to get it just right. So what you're going to do is however you think, okay, I think of this foot on this machine right here where I'm set, it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And so sew it that way and then we'll try it. So I've done, I've sewed this, right, you see I sewed there, and I pressed it. It does not matter which side, just press it. And then I always, I always test them, right? So we lay the ruler on the top, you see, they both have the same, okay. I lay the ruler on the top and what I want to do, which it's uh, challenging to do here while I'm standing up, I mean, while I'm sewing it up right here, what I want to be able to do here is um, that the dotted line that measures my quarter inch seam allowance is exactly on the stitching line. Now, I always tell my students, okay, let's look at this forensically, because if you measure, if you measure from the top, right, and this should be um, two inches plus two inches is four, plus minus the half an inch seam allowance, so it should be three and a half inches, about three and a half inches wide. So we measure it. I have them lay it down and measure it across here. And they see, you know, you kind of see the wavy thing. Okay, this one's here, weird here. That one's skewed out that way. So I always tell them, let's, let's look at it forensically. Fabric detective. Oh, that's a new hobby. I should do that. Okay, so you're going to play fabric detective and you're going to look at this. Because what can happen, there's a lot of things that can happen. One is that this distance here that you have from your stitching line, that it's not exactly a quarter of an inch. So you're going to measure that. There's ways that you can measure it. You take a little seam gauge, one of those little old-fashioned seam gauges, and measure that. And, um, and, and also our rulers here, that would be another way to do it. But what, there's several things that can happen that can cause this problem. So you might think it's exactly a quarter of an inch because maybe the manufacturer and your foot you bought said, this is a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but then you realize, 
it's not. It's not. It's not quite right. So you need to check it, and you need to you need to be sure because what you think was right might not have been right. Then other things that can happen that can keep you not getting an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. Believe it or not, thread. The sizes of thread make a difference. Really and truly, I've seen it happen with my very own eyes. So for example, this is a um, Coates and Clark uh, generic brand thread, and it's thicker. It's a thicker thread. When you press your fabric over, that can be just enough to make just enough of a difference. I'm serious. No lie. So if you, you, you're going with a little thicker thread, and this is a thinner one, and I, I'm a fan of Mettler and Guterman. Oh, look, it matches my shirt. Um, <laughs> I'm a fan of those. But um, what I found is Orophil, big Orophil coats. I love Orophil because it's thin, and I find I get a much more accurate quarter inch seam allowance. So that's what I want to do. So, uh, again, the thread you're using could make a difference. Don't believe me? Go ahead. Try it. Try it yourself. But I'm telling you, I've seen it with my very own eyes in my very own classes. So, so thread can make a difference. You might not be measuring accurately, and you might have trouble like, getting, getting the wobble, right, where it's straight, but then uh, bulges out there. It's a little bit off on this part. I wasn't even there. So those things you need to analyze and figure out. Now, you have some options. So I'm going to share with you different options to get that quarter inch seam allowance. Usually when you start, you get a foot that looks like this, right? And it's just a pretty generic foot. Um, this is the basic one that comes on, on the machine I'm using right now, and it has some lines, and you know, it's, it's okay, right, that's fine. This is what they had when I first started quilting, because, you know, and you had to kind of just eyeball or move your needle over to exactly where you wanted it. And, um, but it's not the best solution for quilters. If you have that and that's where you start with, that's, you know, go with what you got. You just want to measure in that little section and see how far exactly is a quarter of an inch. So the next step up is a quarter inch foot. And I'm going to show you, this is the first, the first one that I got. It's a quarter inch foot. And it has a little tiny hole right there, a single hole. And so instead of the needle being able to go back and forth and back and forth like that, like if you were going to make a zigzag or something, it just has that little hole, so it only pulls down that little tiny bit. It's much more accurate than all of that space, believe it or not. I know, I know, it's crazy or ridiculously picky, but it really helps. It makes a difference. So I remember I was in um, my quilting bee at the time, and, and one of my friends, she came in, and she had one of these. And it had this beautiful little flange that's sticking off at the bottom. I thought, ah, where did you get that foot? I got foot envy. I mean, I, I think I went to the shop on the way home to buy the new foot. Because this little flange, I'm telling you, that just keeps everything all nice and lined up and cozied up next to that edge. So things don't slip and slide. They don't move around. And you may have to practice with your eye, kind of making sure things are lined up under there. But you'll get it. This, I, I'm telling you, this is the first investment if you're starting with a very basic quilting machine, this is the first investment that you make. They come in a few varieties. Here is a clear one. Sometimes you can get a clear one. And I like the clear one, you know, if you're doing a little applique or a little tiny details and you really want to be able to see those. Then, oh, oh, and here, okay, so, so say you don't, you, your machine doesn't come with those. That's not an option. You got a real old one. No worries. You can also do this. This this fella right here is a magnetic seam guide, okay? It has a big magnet on the bottom. Now, just let you know, magnets are not good around computer stuff, but usually in the sewing machines, the computerized mechanisms are up in the top, and this will be down here at the bottom with your, on, on your um, surface there. And you don't need to, I don't think it's an issue, but I just want to warn you about that. So, you know, buyer beware, caveat temptor, or quilter beware, quilter emptor. Something. All right, so, so it's magnetic, and what you do is you put it on there, right? So if your needle's coming down, you line it up a quarter of an inch from where your needle's going to come down. And it helps keep it control. And I still use this when I'm sewing with Minky, that big puffy stuff, because my little one is not, not big enough to keep it under control. This fella? Yes, ma'am. That will do the trick. So another thing that people talk so okay those are aids to be consistent I know there are some other ways too I have a friend believe it or not Kate Colleran and she 
doesn't have a quarter inch foot. She's a professional quilter, sells patterns, seems like a dream, that's where she's from. And she, uh, you know, does all this great stuff. She has no quarter inch foot. She just does, she either does tape, put a stack of, you know, like a few lines of tape on there uh, to guide it, or she'll use sticky notes to put the line up sticky notes. Okay, whatever you can find that makes it work for you, but just find a way that you can do it and be consistent. Now, the other issue is the scant quarter inch. Now, everyone will say, oh, I only use a scant quarter of an inch. You can't use anything else. Like, okay, but, but what, if I, what if I want to try this? How come a quarter of an inch isn't exactly a quarter of an inch, and how come it's a scant? And so I was always like, yeah, all right, whatever, yeah, okay. But, <laughs> but I learned something. I went to, I took a class from Pat Speth, excellent teacher. I just love her. And she introduced me to the whole concept of the scant quarter of an inch. This hole here, that's a different one, is a little bit bigger than the other one. Just a thread or two. It is big enough so I can change my needle placement instead of just coming right through there, I can just bunk one over. It just moves one little stitch, but there's still, it still goes through my single needle hole. Awesome. So I tried that when I was doing triangles. I don't do it all the time, but I tried it when I was doing triangles. And I did her method. I just moved it, making half, you know, half square triangles. I just moved it over, okay, one click. And I'm telling you, things that work together like magic. Oh, it was lovely. So, so I am a fan of the quarter inch of the scant quarter inch seam allowance when I am doing that piece. And scant just means you move it over a thread or two. Then there's two other options which you can kind of up your game here if you want to go even further and for more accuracy. This is a needle plate. And oh, see, let me show you. So this this little magnetic guide, look at that. Oh, it wants sticks right there. So I would line it up on my machine to what I know is going to be a quarter of an inch. See, I'm going to stay right there. All right, but I want you to notice something else about this. This is sort of probably the default kind of plate that yours comes with, and it has lots of room right here, right? Lots of space that matches with the default regular foot, right? Zigzags, decorative stitch, little flowers or puppies, something like that. You can do with those. But we're going to up our game. But, whoop, huh. We're going to up our game to even more accuracy. And this is a single hole. It has one little spot. One little spot. So that, that I'm telling you, you're going to believe me, but that little spot, having that one little there, can make a difference. Because what it does is it, it doesn't give the opportunity to pull down anything extra. It makes everything just, you know, just that very precise, precision, whole, one stitch, next one. Nothing extra gets pulled down. Nothing gets, you know, chomped like it does sometimes. And it, I, I just find that to be really a benefit really a big help. So, if you're having any trouble with your quarter inch seam allowance, I'd love to hear your questions, or if you have great solutions, like, hey, Jenny, I didn't even think about this one. I'd love to hear, love to hear from you. So give it a try. Try some of these techniques. You can go check out QNNTV.com, where I'm doing the Quilt Makers Lessons in Creativity 302. Next time, when we get together, I'm going to talk about Confessions of a Fabric Snob. I will, just a little backstory. I worked in Sofro Fabrics as a kid. I grew up in Cloth World, of course. And I also worked in a quilt shop for a couple of years. So I have a good range and understanding of fabrics, but we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about my confessions as a fabric snob. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you tune in next time and I'll see you there.